As someone who is working towards a more low-tech lifestyle, something I've been considering for a while now is getting an old iPod to help reduce time spent on my phone. I used to read a fair amount of ebooks, but I switched back to physical books and honestly, they're so much more enjoyable to read with and there's no temptation to open other apps, stop to Google something, or even see notification banners fall down my screen, interrupting my flow state. I've deleted nearly all non-essential apps from my phone, I only have a select few notifications on, and all of these efforts have definitely helped aid my goal in using my phone less, but there's still something that hasn't exactly scratched the itch for me. These days, I find myself craving older technology more and more. Old iPods, older phones, camcorders with crappy resolution, 35mm cameras, things like that. A few years ago, I did actually replace my iPhone with a pink Motorola Razr, which I loved but had to stop using because the network was no longer supported after I only had it for like a few months. On one hand, older technology has its downsides, which is that you need to carry more on you to make up for what you could do with one device. During that time, I lost access to so many things I loved having on a smartphone. Access to the Apple ecosystem, Google Maps, my bank app to check on a whim, Apple Pay, Uber, DoorDash, a nice camera, and much to my dismay, Spotify. Music is without a doubt my first love, and it's something I really can't live without. Most of my memories are actually anchored by songs, and that's how I recall them. When I think of specific days or times in my life, I remember it because I recollect what song I was listening to or what album I was obsessing over. When I write diary entries, I include what my current favorite songs are and recent additions to my playlist so I can look back on it. I listen to music and have a solo dance party first thing in the morning, nearly every day, and I've been doing that for about 10 years now. My days aren't complete without it. So naturally, foregoing Spotify is something that has made me hesitant to return to a dumb phone. As a minimalist, the thought of having to carry extra items every day when I already have the convenience of a phone is a little hard to get on board with. I figured that I wouldn't go back to dumb phones anytime soon since I really just don't want to have to carry a camera, notebook, pen, iPod, and other things on me as well to make up for what I lost. Lately, I've changed my mind and have since embraced the little joys that come from those single-use items, especially my iPod. I've had an iPod before, my first being an iPod Touch since by the time I was old enough to have one, Apple had long since moved on from the classics and touchscreens were in full effect. I only used it for a relatively short amount of time before getting an iPhone, which is the phone I've always had over the subsequent years, minus my brief stint with the Razer. There's just been something calling me to deconstruct my phone and go back to single-use items that are technically less convenient, but are still enjoyable and somehow simplify my life in the process. Because of these items, I don't keep my phone on me at all times anymore. It's usually sitting on the dining table like a landline phone that I only check periodically. I can make trips outside and leave it behind, knowing that I don't need it for anything. But most importantly, I'm not sacrificing my love of music while being forced to have my phone in hand, even when I don't necessarily want to have it on me. I picked up this iPod off of eBay and I love it so much. It's the iPod Classic 5.5 Gen, it's 80 gigabytes, and it's absolutely perfect. I knew I wanted a classic rather than one of the later models because when I spent months considering my purchase, it was always a classic that I imagined myself having. I do not regret my purchase and I've been getting so much use out of it literally every single day. I love the feeling of pressing buttons, I love the scroll wheel, I love the sound it makes when you click something, I love how it feels in my hand, so small but chunky, definitely sleek and modern when it came out but not really holding up in those categories compared to our current options on the market, but that's absolutely part of the appeal. I use it with the old style Apple earbuds or with my Bose headphones. You can even get a Bluetooth attachment for hands-free listening. I got this clear case for it so that none of the design is hidden, and I've put a little card on the inside that expresses my philosophy as a luxury minimalist living a low-tech lifestyle. Using this iPod has been very enjoyable, and it feels so nostalgic and reminds me of my childhood in the early 2000s. Although I personally didn't own an iPod Classic, my older brother did, and he let me play with it sometimes. I remember wanting one so bad and was thrilled when I got my iPod Touch. But there's something about the classics that appeal to me most these days. It's so simple without the extra bells and whistles that turns it from being an intentional and curated device into something designed to suck you in and steal your attention. 
when I go for a run in the morning with my iPod, I'm not tempted to take photos of the sunrise or a sweaty selfie to show people I'm being productive and part of the 5am club like I would do when using my phone for Spotify. I'm simply listening to my music and living in the moment, uninterrupted by text and other notifications. I know I'm in the minority, but I think Gen X and early millennials had technology in the sweetest spot. They had cell phones, but only for basic communication. They still mostly relied on house phones, which allows a sense of disconnectedness when one isn't at home. The house phone is also planted in one spot, so the user has to physically go to it when it needs to be used, rather than it always being in your hand or in your pocket or sitting next to you on your table. They had computers, but they were desktops and were likely to be shared by the family, which requires time restraints. And maybe the oldest child had a PC in their room, but this was also stationary, which limits consumption. Movies were collected in the form of VHS or DVD, which are physical items that one must touch and consider before turning on to watch, much less likely to pop around multiple titles or feel fatigued by the thousands of options presented on a screen as you were limited by your own collection. Even more well-to-do families who could afford like those really cool game consoles and other fancy gadgets for entertainment faced the issue that they were likely for home use and not exactly portable. When one left the home, for the most part, they couldn't escape into a world of tech. Yeah, sure, there were portable music players like CD players, which also limits one to their own collection and doesn't come with the ability to scroll. But even once the iPod and similar MP3 players came around, they were only music capable no extra apps or internet to connect to. I'm starting to believe that this was the personal use technology sweet spot. Plenty of options for fun and leisure, but not too many options where we feel overwhelmed and certainly not engineered for addiction. And of course, all of the modern luxuries were fully implemented like washers, dryers, vacuums, nice big TVs and everything else. So there was streamlined home labor, a bevy of entertainment and less addictions. Yeah, you'd see a guy who stays home all day and has a video game addiction, and maybe people who watch too much TV, but even those require the addict to be home. Unlike today, where there's way more addictions available on our phones with games and social media, and unfortunately, they're portable. Like I said, I'm a minimalist, so I do appreciate the ability to have such a light everyday carry since it's all wrapped up in my iPhone, but I can't deny that yearning to simplify and return to objects that actually do require more friction to use. Maybe things are a little too easy now, where part of the fun has been removed from it. Obviously, as a computer scientist dealing with development and studying artificial intelligence, I'm definitely not anti-modern technology, and I think the way we've come so far with what we can make and create from an innovation standpoint is amazing. Like the fact that this small device can be a camera, GPS, telephone, do texting, have games, internet, social media, FaceTime, and so much more is absolutely astounding. I just wonder if we've gotten so convenient that we've lost the plot a bit. Like a prince who has everything done for him, even down to having someone brush his teeth. There's something that ends up being a little sour when you're too pampered. As it turns out, I think one of the best ways I can pamper myself with technology is to say no to it sometimes and use it in a simpler way. So that is why I have been using an iPod lately and it's been an absolutely amazing experience. Sure, it does take more time having to go onto iTunes and put songs on there manually rather than being able to just search for anything at any time on Spotify. But that also is part of the appeal. That's part of the enjoyment of it, having to take the time to really think it out. And I can't do it in the moment. I have to wait until I get home. It allows me to slow down a bit and not have everything happen so instantaneously. So spur of the moment. I think this is actually very valuable. And as Gen Z, it's not something that I was always able to experience in life because my entire life, or at least the majority of it, has been about getting things as streamlined and as convenient as possible. I've actually been enjoying the somewhat lack of convenience. And I think that it's something that we should all be able to experience a little bit more just by stepping away from a few of these hyper convenient technologies and going to something that requires just a bit more effort.